Mars, your aliens in space, do you see foreign creatures over? You know, that's a question that uh, we're up here also trying to answer. Uh, you know, NASA's out there looking for life in space, so, uh, you know, I sure hope that there is life somewhere else out in space. But I can tell you that uh, looking down on the Earth, we, we live on a pretty uh, miraculous planet. It's, it's pretty special to see all the diversity and all the, the life down there and to realize that it's on this one small island in the uh, oasis of uh, vast darkness up here. Over. What's the coolest thing you've ever seen in space? Over. Uh, it's hard to, uh, hard to nail down just one. Uh, Let's go with last night. I was in the cupola looking out at night during a night pass, so it was dark on the earth. We were on the dark side. And the moon was behind us, and it was shining off the clouds below, and, and it was actually reflecting off of the ocean, kind of like the sun would reflect off the ocean. And at the same time, you could see the northern lights uh, dancing on the horizon as we came up over the United States, and you could see all the city lights lit up like a map. And as we sped across the United States, watching the northern lights, the sun rose up over the horizon. It was an amazing experience. Over. If you get sick in space, how do you get medical treatment? Over. Well, so fortunately, we all receive medical training so that we can help each other uh, to some extent. Uh, and we're lucky enough to have a doctor as one of our astronauts up here right now. Uh, but it's not just the six of us up here that are doing this mission. There is a team of hundreds and thousands on the ground that support us. So we have teams of, of medical professionals that we can confer with if we have problems, and they can help us. And we've got equipment up here where they can try to diagnose something that, that might be wrong with us. If something gets really bad and we can't treat it, then we come home. Over. Hi, my name's Emmy, and I'm 13. I'm here in the hospital at the NIH, and my question is, how, what do you do for fun in space? Over. Yeah, for fun in space, uh, you know, one of the coolest things is just being able to float around, so flying through the station and pretending I'm, a, I'm my own spacecraft or I'm a plane that's uh, zipping around, it, it never gets old. I've been here uh, almost 200 days, and I still enjoy it. Uh, we also sit around the, the dinner table and uh, play with our food, floating it in front of us, you know, taking a scoop of food and putting it on my spoon and then letting the spoon float in front of me, not holding on to it and, and eating from a spoon with no hands, uh, drinking our drinks in, the, in bubbles that we squirt out of our drink bags. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Over. Hi, it's Byron. Uh, how many times have you been in space? Over. mission, so I've been up here about 200 days. Uh, I did try to launch once before, so I launched this time in March. Uh, I tried to launch about a year ago in October, and we had a launch failure uh, that caused us to abort the launch. So this was my, my first time in space, but my second try to get there. Over. How are body tissues affected by being in space? Over. You know, the, being in space changes everything. And so if you think about all the things, one of the big changes is gravity. So uh, up here, we don't have gravity pulling down on us all the time. And so we don't feel that. So fluids change. The fluid distribution, my blood goes into different places in my body and at different pressures. It changes how cells uh, reinforce themselves. So my skeleton will change because I'm not constantly applying weight to it, so it can become weak if I don't continue to work out. And the same, same kind of things happen down at the cell level inside tissues because the, the, the skeletal structure of a cell changes because it doesn't have gravity affecting it. So many things change. Even the DNA we're made of changes dra dramatically up here. And that's just from the gravity. If you add radiation in, radiation causes all kinds of changes as well. So space is pretty hard on the human body. Over. Hi, my name is Bombrash. What advice do you have for someone who wants to become one and astronaut over? Yeah, so it's the advice I give to anybody. It, it, find what you have a passion for. Find the thing that you really enjoy doing. 
and apply yourself and try to do that. Um, yeah, everybody that becomes an astronaut has done something else first. And by doing something that you love and you're passionate about, you're going to be very good at it. And in, in that success, then you can bring that successful set of skills to the astronaut corps. And that's really how we build such a strong team in the astronaut corps, is we pick people from all kinds of different backgrounds, very different people, that have all been very successful in doing something they love. Over. Okay. Um, Nick, uh, we want to thank you on behalf of the NIH uh, Children's Center. We want to thank you and all of the... Uh, children here have a shout out to you so go ahead everybody thank you. over oh thank you very much it, it was a pleasure to speak with you today uh, i wish you could see the smile on my face uh being able to answer your questions uh, very thoughtful questions curious questions and i wish you all the very best